The RH blood group system. Our objectives are to know the basic chemical properties of RH antigens, know the differences between ABO and RH antibodies, describe RH phenotype reactions, um, transcribing them into Fisher Race, Modified Wiener, and Rosenfield notations, convert between the four listed nomenclatures, know the three genes responsible for the RH antigens, continued objectives, know how the RH antigens are situated on red blood cells, list the reasons the D antigen may be weakened on red blood cells, know the general characteristics of RH antibodies, including their immunoglobulin class, formation, testing conditions, testing methods, dosage, complement binding, and placental transference. Additional object objectives include to understand the following regarding RH typing reagents, the type of reagent, the components of the reagent, when a control is needed for anti-D typing, what type of immunoglobulin must be present for weak T-D testing, and know the general clinical considerations for transfusion reactions for patients with anti-D. You must also understand the basics of hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn caused by RHD. Know the contents of RHIG and why it is given. Compare the LW antigen to the D antigen and differentiate between anti-D and anti-LW. We have now talked a lot about the ABO and H system. The ABO system only has a few antigens in it. The ABO antibodies are all naturally occurring. This means no exposure to foreign cells is necessary for us to generate the anti-A, anti-B, and anti-A, B. The RH system is completely different from the ABO H system. The RH negative people do not naturally make anti-D. Many people think that since it is part of the blood type, that the RH is also part of the ABO system. It is not. RH specific antigens are on proteins, not carbohydrates or sugars like the ABO antigens. The antibodies to the RH specific antigen are only made after exposure to foreign red blood cells. You must still lack the corresponding antigen to make an alloantibody to the D antigen. The antigens of the RH system are very immunogenic. This means that if a small amount of foreign antigen is introduced into a responder, that person will make the corresponding antibody. RH is the second most important blood group system after ABO. Although the common term RH refers to a specific red cell antigen, which is the D antigen, the RH system has over 50 different antigens. So when we say someone is RH negative or RH positive, when referring to a blood type, we are only referring to the presence or absence of the D antigen. Levin and Stetson were the first to describe the anti-D in an obstetrical patient. First, there was a stillborn baby. After the baby was delivered, the mother required a transfusion. The woman was then transfused with the husband's blood, which was the same ABO blood type but this was a bad idea and resulted in acute hemolytic transfusion reaction. They found an antibody in the mom's serum that reacted with the husband and the baby's blood. They then figured that the baby and husband must share an antigen that the mother lacked and that she was exposed from being pregnant. We now know the second exposure is the acute reaction and the first exposure was the sensitizing event. When Landsteiner and Wiener thought that they found the right antigen, the rhesus factor, but they were wrong. It reacted with the same percentage of antibodies in the obstetrical patient, but was another antibody, later named anti-LW for Landsteiner and Wiener. And the original name for the D antigen stuck as anti-RH. So anti-LW and anti-D are not the same antibody. Antibodies to the D antigen at that time were the primary cause of hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn. This is also called erythroblastosis vitalis, and it was also a significant cause of hemolytic transfusion reactions when D-positive cells were transfused to D-negative patients who had already made anti-D due to sensitization events such as pregnancy or a previous transfusion. 
terminologies used to describe the RH system were derived from four sets of investigators. Two terminologies are based on postulated genetic theories of RH inheritance. The third common terminology used describes only the presence or absence of a given antigen. The fourth is a result of combined efforts of the International Society of Blood Transfusion Committee on terminology for red cell surface antigens. The last one is used to standardize the blood groups from one country to the next. The first terminology is the Fisher race or DCE terminology. Fisher and race postulated that the antigens of the system were produced by three closely linked sets of alleles. Each gene was responsible for producing a product or antigen on the red blood cell surface. This theory is wrong, however, but the nomenclature is handy and is still used today. So we have to learn about it because it's still on the test and is a common uh, way of referring to the genes and the antigens. Each antigen in the Fisher race terminology and the corresponding gene were given the same letter designation. When referring to the gene, the letter is italicized. The phenotype or the antigens expressed on the red blood cells detected by typing uh, for each RBC is defined by the presence of capital D, capital C, lowercase c, uppercase E, and lowercase e expression. It is now known that the lowercase d represents the absence of the d antigen and not an antigen. However, the term continues to be utilized with the Fisher race terminology as a placeholder. This is one of the reasons why the theory is wrong. Each one of these antigens does not have their own gene. The RH system works by an interaction of a few genes, which we'll talk about later. Remember, the absence of the uppercase D will be represented by, in this terminology as a lowercase d as a placeholder, even though there is no lowercase d or little d antigen. This shows the frequency of the antigens in the Caucasian population. Uppercase D is 85%. Absence of D is 15%. Uppercase C is 70%. Uppercase E is 30%. Lowercase C is 80% lowercase e is 98%. Lowercase e is a high frequency antigen since most people have it. The genes are closely linked and inherited as a haplotype. This is the a haplotype is the complement of genes inherited from either parent. So each parent would give you one set from uh, each one of the columns. Example, mom gave you a capital D, lowercase c, lowercase e, and dad gave you lowercase d, lowercase c, lowercase e. Your genotype is then uppercase d, lowercase c, lowercase e, slash lowercase d, lowercase c, lowercase e in Fisher race terminology. You would phen phenotypically type as RHD positive, little c positive, little e positive, and you would type negative for big C and big E. So Fisher race terminology, we just learned five of the antigens of the RH system, which are uppercase D, uppercase C, uppercase E, little c, and little e. In very rare instances, an individual may fail to express any allelic antigens at one or both RH loci. That is, a person may lack big E and little e, or all C and E antigens, both upper and lowercase. The probable genotype for the RH positive person exhibiting a deletion phenotype such as these is written as DC dash or DC dash or D dash. A deletion of the C with E has not been reported. The person expressing no RH antigens on the red blood cell is said to be RH null and the phenotype is written as dash dash. Weakened expression of all RH antigens of an individual has also been reported. These individuals are said to have the RH mod phenotype. Placing parentheses around the D, C, and E indicates weakened antigen expression. Testing the antigens. With all of the terminologies, a determination of the phenotype is completed to try to figure out the haplotypes and probable genotypes. We use anti-D, 
anti big C, anti little C, anti big C, sorry, anti big E, and anti little E, anti sera. The red cells are tested, and if agglutination is present, then it is a positive result for the antigen. If anti big C reacts, then the person is big C positive. We will use pos and neg instead of writing a plus or a minus sign when we write out our types. So we can test for all of the five antigens, but we usually only check for D. We might check type O blood donors for a full type so that we, when we need special types, the blood donor center already has a selection to choose from. We would also check if the patient has antibodies such as occurs in patients who ha get um, a lot of transfusions, such as people with sickle cell disease. Again, the term RH phenotype is misleading. When you hear this term, the person means D, big C, little c, big E, little e antigens. A full RH phenotype would be over 50 antigens, and that is rarely done, and only under extreme circumstances. Anti-little E is a rarer anti-sera. If the patient slash donor red cell tests as E negative, the anti-E may not be tested, and the E antigen will be assumed as positive, although with the ability to create monoclonal anti-E, it is more readily available. Here's an example of what someone's RH phenotype might look like. The zeros represent negative reactions, and the graded reactions are positive results. So we can see with anti-D, there was a four plus reaction. With anti-big C, there was a three plus reaction. With anti-little C, there was no reaction. With anti-big E, there was no reaction. And with anti-little E, there was a three plus reaction. So we have the reactions that we just got on the last slide. And so when we want to determine what was inherited at this point, what, what do we know? We know that the person is D positive, so at least one of the haplotypes must have D. So, so far, that's all we have, and you can see this um, D here at the bottom. So to determine the genotype, we're gonna to have to try to fill in the information based on what we know. So we're going to go to the next slide. Remember that the big C and the little c are a pair, and big E and little p e are a pair. We call these antithetical antigens, which means you get a big C or a little c from one parent. You cannot get a big C and a little c from one parent. Uh, if you get both, then you inherit one from each parent. This applies to the big E and the little e also. With this information, we can fill in the next blanks. So the phenotype we're working with uh, was big D positive, big C positive, a little e negative. So big E negative and a little e positive. And our partial haplotype is shown on the second line. Next, we are big C positive and little c negative. Then we didn't get a little c from either parent and we got big C from both. So now we know we didn't get a big E from either parent since the phenotype is big E negative, and this means that they got little E from both. So the next line, we can fill it in um, with, the, with little E for both. So the only true way to find the last blank would be due to do a molecular genotype for the D antigen or family study. If one parent is RH negative or big D negative, then we would know that the little d would be in the genotype. But for our purposes, we will select the most probable genotype based on the percentage of haplotypes most common in the population. So here we see the uh, prevalences. So our probable genotype so far looks like big D, big C, little e, slash blank, big C, little e. The last blank to fill in would be is it going to be big D or little d? The prevalence of little d, big C, little e is only 2% across all ethnicities, so this is unlikely. The prevalence of 
big D, big C, little e is 42%, 17%, or 70% in the ethnicity shown. In this case, the big D, big C, little e haplotype is the most probable. This does not mean that it can't be the little d, big C, little e. Only a genetic or family study could determine that. So our probable genotype based on the prevalences would be capital D, capital C, and lowercase e for both haplotypes. The last blank to be filled in was this uh, big D. So um, there'll be more practices uh, later. So let's move on with the next terminology. Wiener believed there was one gene responsible for defining RH that produced an agglutinin containing a series of blood factors. The RH gene produced at least three factors with an agglutinogen. Again, this theory is wrong, but it's a quick shorthand way of writing the first R uh, RHs and can incorporate a few of the others. Again, not one gene that produces all the genes work together to produce the antigen. The Wiener terminology is complex and unwieldy. Nevertheless, many blood bankers use modified Wiener terminology interchangeably with other nomenclatures. The terminology allows one to convey RH antigens inherited on one chromosome or haplotype and makes it easier to discuss a genotype. And we can convert Fisher race nomenclature to the Wiener and vice versa. Uh, Wiener's original terminology was uh, a little too hard, but we have modified it and used it in a little shorthand way. So here's what it looks like in a, a little bit of a complicated way, but what we want to look at is look at um, the first line, or sorry, the we're going to look at the the last two columns. Um, and these are the ones that we should be able to um, convert between. Um, the rest of them you should probably ignore because that'll be too much information. So let's go to the next slide. Okay, so here it is. Um, and the important thing to remember with um, this terminology and an easy way to convert is if we use the capital R, it means we have the capital D. And the lowercase r means we have the lowercase d or or no D antigen. And the prime or one is a capital C and a double prime or a two means a capital E. Then the Y or the Z mean there is both a capital E and a capital C. And they represented as superscript as in the Y and the paired with the little r is used. And um, the one, two, and Z are usually super subscripts or next to a capital R designation. Sometimes in the programs, I'm not able to superscript or subscript, so you'll, you'll see it just written next to the capital R or the lowercase r. So, Wiener terminology, the prime and the double prime are, are what we call the, the little marks, and they are represented as superscripts, um, as is the Y, and paired with the little R, and the 1, 2, and Z are usually subscripts um, next to the capital R. So, here's our... Um, RH terminology wiener uh, conversion. So if you have a capital R1, it means you have a capital D, capital C, and a lowercase e. Um, and with a R2, you have a capital D, lowercase c, capital E. And with a lowercase r, you have a lowercase d, c, e. And with a R prime, a little sorry little r prime you have a little d big c little e and with an r o you have a capital d lowercase c lowercase e and with a little r double prime you have a lowercase d lowercase c capital e and with an r z you have 
all capitals, D, C, and E. And with a R, uh, Y, like a lowercase R, Y, you have a lowercase D, capital C, capital E. So two haplotypes make a genotype. This is what the genotype and matching phenotypes would look like. This is very useful, especially when choosing select cells for antibody panels. So um, R1, R1 would be capital D, capital C, lowercase e, and a repeated, right? So it's homozygous. Uh, so the phenotype is D positives, capital C positive, lowercase c negative, capital E negative, lowercase e positive. Um, R2, R1, so again, the capital R is the D, um, and then a capital E, and a lowercase e, a C, sorry. And then a little r is lowercase d, c, e. And little r, little r is, is one of the most common um, Rh negative phenotypes, so lowercase d, c, and e for both phenotypes, or both haplotypes. Now let's do our previous patient's phenotype into modified Wiener terminology. The first thing I do when I'm trying to do Wiener notation is convert my results from testing into the Fisher race notation because it's much easier to do uh, from there to the Wiener. So our phenotype results were D positive, big C positive, little C negative, big E negative, and little E positive. Our Fisher race notation probable genotype was big D, big C, little e, slash, big D, big C, little e. So if there is a D, then we will have a capital R for both sides of the genotype. So we did big D is R, so we got R and a blank and R and a blank. Um, so next, so we've got a, um, so we have the, the D, which we made into a capital R. And now we see that we have a big C on both sides. And so big C is a one. So we're gonna put a one next to each of the R's. So this would be R1, R1. There's no E capital E, so there's no 2 or no Z. So let's use our knowledge and do another conversion from testing results to terminology for both Fisher race and then to modified Wiener. So if we have negative for D, negative for big C, positive for little C, negative for big E, and positive for little E, which the results are shown here. So if we don't have a big D, then we're gonna have a little D in each place as a placeholder. Remember, that means the absence of D, not a little D antigen. So next, we see that there is a lowercase c and a lowercase e, but neither the um, big C, and because this is homozygous little c, because there's no big C, we're going to put a little c on both sides. Um, next, we need to figure out the E antigens, and so there's no capital E, so we're going to have homozygous little e, and we'll have a little e on both sides. So we did that, and that was pretty easy. So next, we have to convert this from the Fisher race to the Wiener. So we have our a lowercase d. So because we have lowercase d, this is equal to little r. So that's our base, little r, and little r for both sides. There's no capital C or capital E, so there's no prime, double prime, or y. So our final wiener is just little r, little r. Um, so we don't put... Um, 
no need to put the zero sub superscript. Just little r, little r. So next um, system is Rosenfield. Rosenfield proposed a system that assigned a number to each antigen of the RA system in the order of its discovery or recognized relationship to the RA system. This system demonstrates the presence or absence for the antigen on the red blood cells. There's no genetic basis or inheritance uh, for this theory uh, for this system. So for the Rosenfield system, a minus sign preceding a number designates the absence of the antigen. If an antigen has not been typed, its number does not appear in the sequence. An advantage of this nomenclature is that red blood cell phenotype is thus succinctly described. The number that you will need to learn for RH1 through RH5. The order is big D, big C, big E, little c, little e. So the capital letters are first and then the lowercase letters. The little d does not have a number because there is no antigen. The numeric system is well suited to electronic data processing. Its use expedites data entry and retrieval. Its primary limiting factor is that there is a similar nomenclature for numerous other blood groups such as Kel, Duffy, Kid, Lutheran, and many more. Therefore, when using the Rosenfield nomenclature on the computer, we must put both the alpha RH or the K and the numeric 1, 2, minus 3, etc. to denote a phenotype. Here's an example of a conversion if we have a phenotype D positive. C capital big C positive, little c negative, big E negative, little e positive, we must first rearrange them so that they are in the order that we want. Um, the capital letters first and then the lowercase letters. So RHD is present, so we're going to have a 1. Big C is present, so we're going to have a 2. Big E is absent, so we're going to have a minus 3. Little c is absent, we'll have a minus 4. And little e is present, so we will have a five. So it'll be Rh colon one comma two comma minus three comma minus four comma five. So our next example, uh, we have D negative, big C negative, little C positive, big E negative, little E positive. Let's rearrange them so they are in the Rosenfield numerical order. So, big D negative, big C negative, big E negative, little C positive, little E positive. So, if the RH, if the RHD is absent, we're going to have a minus 1. Big C is absent, minus 2. Big E is absent, minus 3. Little C is present, 4. Little E is present, 5. So one last nomenclature to go through. So this is the one that's standardized across the nations and it's developed uh, for data processing and standard for iReadable and computer data. So this is the, the main one that is used if we're going to probably in the computer systems now is ISBT, depending on your um, software system. So this is the International Society of Blood Transfusion Committee, right? So they got from all different countries and numbered the different antigens um, so that we can use it, see it on the blood bag or, or on the patient record, and we could read it off of the blood bag with a barcode reader. So the ISBT adopted a six-digit number for each antigen belonging to a blood group system. The first three numbers represent the system, and the remaining three, the antigenic specificity. Number 004 was assigned to the RH blood group system, and each antigen assigned to the RH system was given a unique number to complete the six-digit computer number. So for the phenotype, um, D positive, big C positive, little c negative, big E negative, little e positive. So we're going to rearrange them into the same order. So 
luckily this is in the same order as the uh, Rosenfield. So one is D, two is capital C, three is capital E, then lowercase c and lowercase e. So typically we're only going to note the antigens that are present. So for this one, we would have 004001 for the D, 004002 for big C, and 004005 for little e. So another conversion, again, we have, uh, we only have two antigens present, the little C and the little E, so we're going to have 004004 and 004 and 005. So uh, an overview of our RH terminologies, there can be some testing differences depending on zygosity. For a gene, you can be either homozygous or heterozygous. For example, if you have both big C and little c, you are heterozygous for the C gene. Someone who is big E positive, little e negative, is homozygous for big E. There are some substantial differences in phenotypes and genotypes in various populations. These differences should be considered when trying to locate a compatible blood type for recipients with unusual or multiple RH antibodies. When we talk about the genes for RH, there are three genes, RHAG, RHD, and RHCE, which are in italics, meaning they are, we are talking about genes. The antigens will be RHD, RHCE, RH lowercase c, capital E, RH lowercase c, lowercase e, and RH capital C, capital E. No italics means these are protein antigens. Tibbet correctly proposed that the two closely linked genes located on chromosome 1 control expression of the RH proteins. So one gene for RHD either makes or does not make the D protein. One gene for CE makes one of four polypeptides. So RH capital C lowercase e, RH lowercase c capital E, RH lowercase c lowercase e, or RH capital C capital E. Of course, there are mutants, but in general, that is the correct two gene uh, responsible for the production of the RH antigens. So a third gene is important in the expression of RH antigens, the RHAG associated, so it's the RH associated glycoprotein, so it's a co-expressor, so it must be present for the RH antigens to be produced, and the form complexes with the RH proteins. So sort of like the H gene had to be present for the A and B antigens to be created, the RHAG um, must be present for the RH antigens to be expressed. In rare instances, individuals express no RH antigens on their red blood cells. These individuals are said to have the RH null phenotype. They are missing the RHAG gene. They may have the other RH genes, but they can't make the antigens without this RHAG gene. The RHD positive phenotypes occur when a person inherits one or two codominant RHD genes, which results in the expression of the D antigen. In addition to the RHD gene, two RHCE genes are inherited, one from each parent. There are two RH negative mutations from differing ethnic backgrounds, European, African, and Asian. So uh, the gene may be slightly different from uh, in different ethnicities, but they'll still type as RH negative. The biochemistry of antigens. The RH antigens are non-glycosylated proteins re residing on a transmembrane protein that are an integral part of the red blood cell membrane. It weaves in and out of the membrane, so only small parts of it are on the surface. The number of D antigen sites varies depending on the RH phenotype. Try to remember D dash dash has the most RHD on its cells, followed by R2, R2, R1, R2, 
R1, R1, R2, little r, RO, little r, R1, little r, which uh, may result in a weaker positive test, but they'll still be RH positive. The RH antigens are found exclusively on the red blood cells. They are not found on, in secretions. As transmembrane proteins, they play a role in maintaining the structural integrity of the red blood cells and may act as a molecular transporter. The RH null person will not have a stable membrane due to the lack of these antigens. Some people have weaker expressions of D, which may not be detected, except when using weak D testing. These include C in trans to RHD, the position effect or gene interaction effect. The allele carrying the RHD is trans or in the opposite haplotype to the allele carrying the big C. Example would be capital D, lowercase c, lowercase e, slash, lowercase d, big C, little e. The Rh antigen on the red blood cell is normal, but the steric arrangement of the C antigen in relationship to the D antigen appears to interfere with the expression of the D antigen. This interference with D expression does not occur when the C capital big C gene is inherited in the cis position to the RHD, such as um, if someone was uh, big R, little r. It is not possible to serologically distinguish a genetic weak D from the position effect weak D. Molecular studies would differentiate the two types. Practically speaking, this is unnecessary because the D antigen is structurally complete. These individuals can receive D positive red blood cells with no adverse effects. Um, next is weak D, inheritance of a RHD gene that codes for a weakened expression of the D antigen. D antigens expressed appear to be complete, but fewer in number. Mutations in the RHD gene occur, causing changes in amino acids present in the membrane or intracellular region of the RHD protein, causing transformational changes in the protein. Weak D phenotypes rarely make anti-D since changes in their D protein occur inside the red blood cells. A partial D is in when one or more of the D epitopes within the entire D protein is either missing or altered and may appear weaker than expected or that may not react at all when routine procedures are used. Others may show normal typing with reagent anti-D. D antigen is made of antigenic subparts genetically determined that could be absent in rare instances if an individual lacks one or more pieces or epitopes of the total D antigen. Alloantibodies can be made to the missing epitope if exposed to red cells that possess the complete D antigen. Seven categories were recognized designated by Roman numerals one through seven. Category one is now obsolete and a few of the categories have been further subdivided. D, E, L, is a phenotype occurring in individuals who red blood cells possess an extremely low number of D antigens that most reagent anti-D are unable to detect. Absorbing and eluding anti-D from the individual red cells is often the only way to detect this D antigen. Detection of Rh antibodies and antigens. Most Rh antibodies are IgG and react optimally optimally at 37 degrees or after AHG testing. RH antibodies are usually produced following exposure to foreign red blood cells, um, so they are immune alloantibodies. RH antibodies may show dosage, which means they will react stronger with cells with homozygous expression of the antigens. RH antibodies are enhanced when testing uh, with enzyme-treated red blood cells. Rh antibodies are produced after exposure to foreign antigens. Rh antibodies often persist for years and the titers will increase after re-exposure. Rh antibodies are usually IgG. Rh antibodies do not bind complement. Rh antibodies can transfer across the placenta and cause severe hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn. Rh typing reagents. 
the goal is to use a reagent anti-D that will show that will allow for typing individual red cells so as quickly and accurately as typing the ABO type. The reagents may be high protein based or low protein based, saline based, chemically modified, monoclonal, or blends of monoclonal antibodies. Chemically modified IgG anti-D molecules allow the antibody to span the distance between red blood cells in a low protein medium. These can be used for both slide and tube testing and do not require a separate manufactured RH control as long as the sample type as A, B, or O. When samples test A, B positive or when the RH test is performed by itself, a saline control or 6 to 8% albumin control must be used to ensure the reaction is true agglutination and not spontaneous agglutination. Monoclonal reagents are derived from single clones of antibody producing cells. D antigen is composed of many epitopes and the monoclonal RH antibodies have a narrow specificity. Monoclonal anti D reagents are usually a combination of monoclonal anti D reagents from several different clones to ensure reactivity with a broad spectrum of RH positive red blood cells. This is called a monoclonal blend. Some companies also blend IgM and IgG anti-D to maximize visualization of reactions at immediate spin testing and to allow indirect antiglobulin testing for weak D antigen with the same reagent. RH antigens are highly immunogenic. Circulating antibody appears within four months of a primary exposure and within two to seven days after a secondary exposure. RH-mediated hemolytic transfusion reactions by primary sensitization or secondary immunization result in extravascular destruction of immunoglobulin-coated red blood cells. That means they're removed in the spleen and not lysed in the circulation. When the direct antiglobulin test indicates that the recipient's red cells are coated with IgG, elution studies may be helpful in defining the antibody specificity. If antibody is detected in either the serum or eluate, subsequent transfusions should lack the implicated antigen. It is not unusual for a person with a single RH antibody to produce additional RH antibodies if further stimulated. This is why so many places will give RH specific along with Kel negative uh, to sickle cell patients who will be transfused over their entire lifetime. Hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn may be caused by RH antibodies. RH antigens are well developed on fetal cells. RH antibodies are IgG and cross the placenta. The treatment is preventative using RH uh, immunoglobulin, known as Rogam. It is a purified preparation of Ig anti D given to RH negative women during pregnancy and after delivery of an RH positive fetus. This Passive antibody will attach to any D antigens positive cells, which are then removed in the spleen. The mother's immune system does not see the antigen and create an active anti-D. Once a woman makes active anti-D, she will attack every D positive baby, uh, baby's red blood cells. The only treatment would be intrauterine transfusion of D negative red blood cells. The Landsteiner Wiener blood group dates from the time the RH antigens were first recognized. The antibody produced by injecting rhesus monkeys into guinea pigs and rabbits was identified as having the same specificity as the antibody Levin and Stetson described earlier. It was later found that the two antibodies, anti-D and anti-LW, were not identical. So this anti-rhesus, or Landsteiner Wiener, renamed anti-LW in their honor. Phenotypically, RH and LW systems are very similar. This is how we differentiate between anti-D and anti-LW. The anti-LW will react with all cells, but the anti-LW will react strongly with D positive adult cells, but weakly with D negative adult cells. The anti-LW will react equally with D positive and D negative cord cells. Anti-D will only react with D-positive cord cells and D-positive adult cells. 
but not at all with D negative cells. In summary, the Rh blood group system is a large and complex system. The most common antigens are D, capital C, capital E, lowercase c, and lowercase e. There are over 57 antigens currently in the Rh blood group system. Terminology has evolved over the years, and the four nomenclatures used today are Fisher Race, Modified Wiener, Rosenfield, and ISBT. Conversions between the nomenclatures is a common board question. Three genes work together in this system. They are RHD, RHCE, and RHAG. RH null describes red blood cells that do not express any of the RH antigens. Since the RH antigens are very immunogenic, transfusion reactions can be severe. Hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn caused by RHD is one of the most severe types of hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn. RHIG was developed to help prevent HDFN due to RHD. To end uh, the reagents to type for anti-D antigen have been developed that utilize a monoclonal blend to the many epitopes of the D antigen to accurately reflect the RHD typing. Most reagents have an IgM and IgG anti-D component to be able to detect D by direct agglutination and weak D by the anticoagulant test. The LW and RH systems were once thought to be the same due to many similarities. The LW antigens and antibodies were determined to be different and react differently with adult and core blood cells of DRH positive types. Thank you for listening.